researched, hung out, went to a couple black cookouts, said the wrong thing, <laughs> got his ass beat, but now, now, got his ass beat. he's more aware, he's more knowledgeable. <laughs> of- <laughs> okay. Hey, what's going on? Sintel with the Intel, and I'm here with the beautiful Michael Claire. ATL! ATL, baby, episode 8, right around the corner. You need to catch up on some of the previous episodes, 1 through 7. There'll be a link in the description. Oh, let's just hurry up and get this bad boy rolling. Oh, thumbs up, man. Give us a... Ah, oh, they're going at Walt Disney. Uh, remember when they did that with the goofy hats yeah. in Amsterdam? Yeah, they did. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. The goofy hats. Maybe mm-hmm. get an explanation of what those goofy hats mean. Hey, Believe it or not, we named him after Tom Jones. Hey. Oh. Hey. Oh. Uh. Hey. <laughs> hey. I believe it. No, that office he was sitting in was oh. their teacher's lounge. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I used to watch it with him. I remember thinking, it's kind of boring. <laughs> As the center of a piece that. of a series he called Goofy, that. Please. <laughs> Goofy. Goofy, please. After class one day, he... <laughs> a whole nother planet. Different culture, that's what like, it is. Hey, <laughs> come on, you know Goofy's... Uh, <laughs> I never put those two I together. I did. You did it? Oh, I did. It was either the funniest thing or the saddest thing you'd ever seen. I believe that. That short was what got him into Disney. Wow. Wow. Our company. Yeah. And Thomas was one of the first of those. <laughs> first of those. Thomas started out at Disney uh-huh. as an assistant animator on DuckTales, the movie. <laughs> DuckTales. <laughs> Thomas Washington was an animator. People were pretty upset when they found yes. out they voted oh, okay. for the wrong man. Oh. Uh, oh, so that's accidental. how it happened. We tried to handle it smoothly, but... Thomas held our feet to the fire. Yeah, you can't be like, oh, I'm gonna hire you in the night. So because of this, you know, behind closed... Look at their faces. Look at their faces. <laughs> this cat was on my line with some foolishness talking about he's the CEO of Disney. I was, I was crying and laughing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he took me to his office. <laughs> Yes. And Pluto's a dog. a dog. So why is he letting Mickey do that to one of his own? Mm. Yeah, T had a running scare. Mm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Years and years. But as soon as Thomas came in, he said, I want you to be lead director on this. Nice. And I said, on what? <laughs> <laughs> the blackest movie of all time. Oh, shoot. I know, is this gonna lead to a goofy movie? Of course it is. That's hilarious. Goofy. Wow. Yeah. They're really going there. Best buddy. Oh, oh Donald movie. Duck. No, silly. With you. <laughs> oh my gosh, I remember that movie yeah. so well. Pretty early. He and Thomas, they were inseparable. He did everything for that boy. Oh my god. Look at this. <laughs> oh, look at that. Gave him his little first little desk. <laughs> Am I my brother's keeper? Nino! Yes. Nino Brown. Oh! 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 CMB, baby, we all we got! With the Jim Crow South during the 30s and the 40s. A lot of the film had yeah, deeper meanings. It? And word got around that it meant a lot more. <laughs> you think? <laughs> Researched, hung out, went to a couple black cookouts, said the wrong thing, <laughs> got his ass beat. But now, now, got his ass beat. <laughs> he's more aware. <laughs> okay. I can remember Thomas ranting in his office. They're trying to make me put this white boy in my movie. And I'm thinking, uh, he's a mouse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for a good time. <laughs> uh, he knew he was going to get fired. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh. <laughs> Get it Get it 18 hour days. And uh, hey. he would be screaming, we don't dance like that. And he would bring his friend's kids in. 
<laughs> Moonwalk and and you know do all like you know this oh, stuff. Oh, man. oh, what is that? Oh man, I must have drawn a pair of gloves dapping. I don't know. Over a pair, a pair of gloves dapping. Taryn, that's dappin'. not a dap. That's not a dap. Where's the snap? <laughs> you see my knees? <laughs> Draw this! Get this down! Okay? <laughs> Draw this! One time. <laughs> and he was up there drinking whiskey with Robert Townsend and Janet Jackson. Oh. Yeah! <laughs> Dina Howard. Oh! Wow. And when Dina Howard! In, the 90s. Thomas went, the 90s. who ordered the white rice? Oh! And, uh, I just didn't get it. Oh. Everybody used to be up there. Eddie Murphy, Arsenio Brian Hall, Kadeem. He aging very well. Okay, Brian. It was crazy he even had that office. Everyone would go up there and just hang as we plotted our overthrow of Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> Last, Last night, night I, I, I saw you standing. standing. <laughs> Ted was the man back there. And then he did this chilling laugh. <laughs> what on earth? Surprisingly hard. <laughs> the the He's on the table. The, to buy the homecoming picture, the fresh out the yeah, joint picture. <laughs> it's crazy. That's crazy. It all came down to the end of the movie. Really? Oh my gosh. It looks like the Tupac uh, Shug Knight picture. They'd added it without his knowledge. He'd wanted Goofy and Max to wander into a thrift store and discover Huey Newton's rattan. <laughs> <laughs> along the way, he made the black as moon. <laughs> Yo, oh, they're gonna end it with the song too. Mm -mm -mm. They should have ended it with a. Uh, they should have ended hey. it with Seven Campbell. <laughs> <laughs> well, they kind of did. No, they did it. I mean, that's Tim. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> that was the jam, though. That is so funny. Uh, I don't even know where to begin. There are so many layers to this particular one. Well, I mean, so there are so, 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 so many layers. Well, let me hear your thoughts because mine might be a little different. Okay, well, I guess let's, I guess we'll just start pretty simple. Um, for those that don't know, many people consider a Goofy movie to be one of the blackest Disney movies, Disney projects of all time outside of The Lion King. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was interesting because I'm, I'm I'm a bit of an old head, so I was in I was in I think I was almost in college when the Goofy movie came out. If I, if I remember Ninety right. something they said. Yeah. I don't know. Um, but you know, it was um, it was the very first time, if I remember right, that that um, Goofy had been in a movie without Mickey in it. I remember that was like one of the crazy things at the time when it came out, and there was like it's a movie, a Disney movie with all these characters, and it doesn't have Mickey in it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And one of the th reasons why it was considered like one of the greatest black Disney movies of all time was a the big dance number at the very end, and then like hip hop at, at the time, the culture of hip hop was like absolutely bubbling. Everything with the big clothes, the music, the slang, how everybody talked, the dancing, all of that. And this movie had like all of that in it. Mm -hmm. Now, do I think its sole purpose when they first created this movie was to aim it towards people of color? I don't think so. I think they just wanted to hijack the culture in real life and then just kind of like make money off of it. But, you know, we just embraced it and it was like, this is kind of like our movie. Well, what about Thomas? Uh, the, the character Thomas? No, the the animator, the oh. CEO. Okay, now Thomas is, is a work of fiction. Okay, it really wasn't like the CEO of Disney, <laughs> which is great. But I like how they take, that's the beautiful thing about, about this, about Atlanta is they take like real real moments and then wrap interesting story around it you know exceptional fictional story mm -hmm. around real elements and 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 repurpose uh old truths I guess that's the best way to kind of to kind of explain it so in order to like <laughs> make arguably the blackest movie during probably one of the most pinnacle times in hip hop culture and black culture within the 90s uh you would need a better backstory than probably just a bunch of you know 
you know, white CEOs getting together and was like, this is what the kids are dancing to these days. Let's make a movie about it. So it took it took the narrative, flipped it on his head and empowered it and then still told a, 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 a touching story about the struggles of maintaining your blackness. Uh, maintaining your blackness when you're at the when you're at the head of a multi-billion dollar company, uh, maintaining your blackness uh, with every with black eyes looking at you and, and meeting those expectations, and then also meeting the expectations of your family. So it took something radicalized, turned it goofy, flipped it on his head, uh, had our hero overcome, and then also he's real Shakespearean and tragic that he ends up dying at the end. It's like only. Donald Glover can come up with something <laughs> as absolutely crazy as this. How about you? Okay, for a minute, I thought Thomas Washington was real. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, think Thomas Washington is real. I thought Thomas Washington was a real person. Um, not maybe necessarily, obviously, in that regard. But, you know, <laughs> I understand that he's a symbol. Mm -hmm. um, but it's interesting to me, like, the pressures of all of that you know, being considered in an industry that's not black enough, right? right? Like drawing, being right. an animator. Yeah. Um, so certain things that are considered to be not black right. um, and having the pressure to kind of make it for the culture and yeah. what that looks like and, um, you know, having fun but not taking it to the extreme, dealing with people that don't understand, um, trying to help people understand. Like you can't, if you're not a person of color it's very difficult for you to draw a person of color or write about their behaviors or those type of things right because you don't really understand or know exactly what the culture is yeah um so that was fascinating uh the pressure from family there wasn't really a lot i didn't feel like there was a lot of pressure that the family was giving to him but he put a lot of pressure on himself which i understand okay. in order to do it for his family. Does okay. that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and I, I understand that that's a very real pressure. Mm -hmm. um, so the, all of that part was super fascinating to me. Yeah, and, and let's be clear, uh, this is absolutely Donald Glover telling his story. Mm -hmm. This is Donald Glover's story. Yeah. I don't know if you've, if anybody here or our listeners are familiar with his music, but in some of his previous, in some of his pre previous albums, um, in records, he talks about the struggle of maintaining blackness, maintaining mm -hmm. blackness in the eyes of whiteness, maintaining blackness within mm -hmm. the eyes of his own community, mm -hmm. in front of the eyes of his own family. Um, multiple songs. And for him, it's funny because I remember when it wasn't cool to like Donald Glover. I remember that. I remember when, when especially when he was uh, on Community, he was considered, you know, like the corny black guy, right? Mm. And now he's like, the, the, the tip of the spear when it comes to, to this type of, of narration of the black experience on in, in television. Mm -hmm. But he still remembers his roots, hence this hence this show. You know, he probably did get his bicycle stolen. He probably was bullied at home. Uh, Cause I think he, 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 he's from Atlanta if I remember right. Um, but you know, and and in Atlanta, you know, it's a it's a very black community. I, I know I'm stating the obvious to many people, but if you are somebody who thinks counter to the culture within that space, then you're going to be, you know, what is it? What is it? The the, the nail that sticks out is the first to get hammered, or something like that. Right. I don't know. Okay. Um, and he got hammered a lot. And he, then he got when he moved into a space where he had to assimilate into a culture that wasn't his. He had he got hammered yet again. And now, like like this character uh, Thomas, who who is uh, the head of this massive ship, this massive culture, you know, and everybody's looking at him for for like you know how are you going to guide us to 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 the quote unquote like promised land of the black experience through entertainment? You know that pressure I'm sure is absolutely insane for Donald Glover in real life. You know. Well, and the interesting thing is though he actually Thomas kind of put that on himself. In a way, okay. um, which I'm glad he did, because if you are in a space like that and you have the ability right. to kind of shine some lights on on some things, I would I would hope that you would. Right. But it's interesting because he didn't really. No one put that pressure on him. Like Disney wasn't like, hey, we need you to be the voice of of black culture. Right. Uh, the people that he worked with weren't like, hey, let's draw Goofy and his son and have this whole experience that is a symbol of black culture. Right. Um, but I understand feeling that pressure. Right. And so he kind of, it escalated to the point where he was laughing like Goofy. Well, yeah, I mean, he ends up going mental crazy. Mental health, yeah. well, mental health issues. Yeah. 
Well, the, the thing is, is that a lot of times many of us can't get the experience in order to make these big, powerful moves unless you're put into a position mm. and be it through luck, be mm. it through whatever the case. Mm -hmm. Once you get in that position, you got to do something with it. Or, or sometimes you feel the, or maybe take that back. Yes. Sometimes you feel the responsibility yes. to, to do something with it. Yes. Um, I think that there was a very interesting conversation regarding like the nature of who Goofy is, right? And Goofy, I think they, they're pretty much, is pretty much saying like this aloof, um, you not know, very bright. Not, you know, real, real, real niggerish in content, right? And I think that the parallel when it comes to him and Donald Glover is that when he first hit the scene in Community, he played a character that some people in the community might have considered to be a bit of a buffoon. You know, he wasn't really that smart. He was an athletic dude. He was, uh, you know, a punchline a lot of the times. Mm -hmm. There wasn't like a whole lot of depth like to his character. He was funny as hell, but mm -hmm. you know, he was doing the whole, you know, shucking and jiving kind of thing. Too many people, you know. Um, not everybody feels that way, but but that conversation was brought up within with, with, within our, our community for those that watched. Many people within our community didn't watch community at all. You know, it was, I, more, yeah, I, it was I didn't more, initially. It was more other people that, that watched it. It was just one of those things. So he didn't really, he kind of like flew underneath the underneath the radar. But I'm sure the people that did, and when he gets back home to his community and they're like, yo, why are you this goofy dude? You know, to, 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 to hit on the, 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 the name, you know, on the, the name, hit the name on the head. And I'm sure he probably kind of like had to struggle it. So I think what's interesting is that he redefined that. Like, like this man did with, with the Goofy movie. He took this character and many of us in just, or just in blackness in general, we could take these characters of who we think that, that, that people shun and look down upon, embrace it, and then turn it into something else and own it, own it to ourselves. And he took the goofy idea concept and turned it into a movie, at least this character did in this particular show. Mm -hmm. So he, he empowered something that, that was kind of like, you know, kind of like laughed at, uh, and then like made it like the, 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 the tip of the spear for, for the Disney franchise. It's just interesting how like blackness in general can do that with a lot of things. Um, so I, to me, I don't know. It, it almost sounds like a bit of a cry for help too, a little bit, mm. especially considering how Thomas ends in this in this series. You know, like don't get me wrong, this is all laughs and stuff. And I think Donald Glover is a wizard and brilliant when it comes to taking things and having us laugh at uncomfortable situations. Mm -hmm. But there's elements of truth in, in artistry, right? Mm -hmm. You know. So I'm not saying that someone needs to do a wellness check on him, but I'm just saying. Don't be surprised if those thoughts aren't like running in his head. Well, I'm sure. I mean, that's pressure. It's overwhelming sense of um, carrying the whole weight of a community on your shoulders. Yeah. That's a lot of pressure. Yeah. Um, and I'm glad that he's, you know, able to show that, yes, there are mental health issues that come up with this pressure. There are things that occur that you think about with this pressure. Yeah. Um, I'm hopeful that maybe he, if, if it is something that somebody mm. or he is dealing with that they get help or to you know talk to somebody so it's not saying that that has to be the outcome right um but it's a very real reality that mental health issues are going to pop up when you're stressed out yeah yeah and then what about the incredible timing of this because one of the largest black people within the entertainment community uh who is who has known mental health issues kanye west is currently buckling and folding under the stress of his empire that, that he's created be it, be it in a self-destructive way or if it's planned out, we, we don't really know the behind the scenes of what Kanye is doing regarding it, but we do know that this kingdom that he's building mm -hmm. is changing. It, I don't know if it's crumbling or I don't know if it's being reformed into something else, mm -hmm. but there is a massive change that is happening and a lot of that can be attributed to mental health, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, there's a lot of really powerful black people who have fallen as a result of the stress. Dave Chappelle has buckled. Uh, he moved to Africa as a result of his stress. Mm -hmm. Mariah Carey had her breakdown. I remember when Martin Lawrence was waving a gun, mm -hmm. um, um, wearing like wearing a sweatsuit, waving a gun. Will Smith is going up to accept a, the uh, one of the greatest awards of all time, and he snaps. Like th these pressures are like real, and people forget that these are human beings dealing with abnormal circumstances and. People have these expectations that everybody's shoulders are just supposed to be this so strong that they can hold up to, to that weight. Mm -hmm. And the fact is, is that these people are human beings, you know, and they will fold. You put enough pressure on anybody. I don't care who it is. Enough pressure, that person will fold and or change. Yeah, look at Tom Brady. 
<laughs> Tom Brady. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's yeah. not. He's not our symbol of no, blackness. No, but no, it's a perfect saying. example. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I no, wasn't talking about in example. regard to blackness. Right. I'm just talking about you put enough pressure on us in anybody. They'll yeah. fall. And I'm like Tom Brady is an example of that. Um, this show is just really <laughs> fascinating and brilliant to me in so many levels. And like you said, I think we talked about this before. I think it's one of those things where it's before it's time yet again. Oh yeah, way um, way way ahead of. Its I know time. there will be a lot of like culture african culture classes uh 2.0 in the coming years that will like have all of these episodes as part of their curriculum um because it just it opens the conversation it shows people you know that there are different layers Mm -hmm. to all of our culture we know that but i mean there's just so many different layers and just the pressures that we kind of put on ourselves um in order to be a part of the culture yeah so it's fascinating yeah um it was another quick thing um i just like how like this character, Michael, Michael Thomas, I think Thomas, Thomas, Thomas Washington, Thomas Washington, excuse me, I keep calling him Michael Thomas, <laughs> Thomas Washington. I love how he vets his characters. Like there's a lot, he gave us a lot of history behind Thomas. And like one of the things like Astro, Astro Boy, mm-hmm. um, uh, the, the Little Prince, even though they changed yes. it to Loves its actual the prince. prince. Um, like all of these things that kind of like vet his credibility and, and the history that, you know, he's not just, uh, uh, a person of the moment, you know, he's got a history of doing this animation mm-hmm. style and an appreciation for it. And then you get a chance to see like his grind so that when he does um, get to the helm, he's already prepared. Mm-hmm. That's the funny thing. Like he accidentally and stumbled his way into becoming the CEO mm-hmm. uh, of Disney. But whether by hook or crook, uh, he still stood up mm-hmm. and was still he still had the history behind him to to maintain the to maintain the position mm-hmm. and i think a lot of that happens to many of us within the culture um you know many of our people end up getting put in these extraordinary positions and you know we'll shine you know because yeah. there, there's been like years of labor and toil that's gone behind it well not only that and sometimes it's just fake it till you make it yeah. i mean if you're given an opportunity there what did, uh, I'm about to quote Eminem up in this piece. It only comes once in a lifetime. You know, so it's like, lose yourself in the moment. You got to own it. You know, Nick got to never let it go. Um, (laughs) You only get one shot, so not miss the time. Yeah, Um, yeah, but no, I feel like you're absolutely right, though. We're overqualified for 99% of the jobs that we have anyway. So when when we do get to a certain level, it's like, yeah, of course we're going to shine because we're more qualified than the person that actually had the position. Yeah. Um, So, yeah, it's just brilliant. It's brilliant. How do you feel about the tie-in with the goofy hats that we saw in earlier episodes? Because uh, there was the one when I think they were in Amsterdam. They were in Amsterdam, yeah. In Amsterdam. And everybody had and on the hats. Yeah. So it's almost like they're still embracing black culture, right? Like, yeah. Now, now, now that we know what the goofy hat means. What it kind of represents, yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So it's, it's like, just a bunch of people in Amsterdam. Yeah. Representing. We're, wearing blackness. Yeah. Golly. Or, or what That's that represents. Just... Remember, we said what it represents for their country, too, right? Yeah. Because it showed a lot of that, like blackness in that country. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We can I'll, go on forever. Oh, go ahead. I was thinking, I know, I know, because there's so much stuff in here. Mm-hmm. It's, this is this one was really packed full of just goodies. Uh, there was a cool little shot uh, where they, there's a there's a shot where they show uh, Suge Knight and Tupac on the day before, on the day of his, day of his murder, right? And Tupac is in the, the in the passenger seat and Strip Knight is in the driver's seat. And then they showed like that picture, but it was in black and white. I thought that was I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, like the self-destruction. And then I, I'm saying that because Tupac was such a major influence. He was at the tip of the spear too, leading hip hop in a way that it had never really been to. Like people forget like Tupac was one of the first to successfully cross over into Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Um, successful. I know. I know. LL Cool J did it beforehand. Yes, I know. And I know Hammer did it with with animation. But Tupac was the first to really do it uh, on that level. Mm-hmm. Um, but he ended up taking a role playing Bishop in uh, Juice. in Juice. And many people say that that was the role that changed everything because he couldn't shake the character from his real from his real life. I don't know if that's real or if it's fake, but that was what was that was what was said. And he embodied Bishop. And as a result of embodying who Bishop was, who was a crazy kid, you know, with, without a lot of guidance, um, making foolish decisions, his, his life kind of went down that path so far that he ended up, you know, ended up getting murdered in, in uh, Vegas. I think he was murdered in Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a final picture of his, of his demise. And we see here with Thomas when he's in the board meeting. And he ends up saying, like, I am Goofy. And he starts having the maniacal Goofy laugh. Mm-hmm. So it's like, oh, I can see 
where those where those intersections uh, uh, happen with that. Okay. Um, all right. Well, uh, anything? Oh, there's one more. Okay, one more interesting. I'm gonna post towards. <laughs> Golly, it's just chock full of goodness, and I swear I'm done. Uh, I know people are like, "Yo, can you please wrap this up?" So there is a comparison um, with we've seen with hip hop as a culture being compared to like somebody's mother. When we were talking about like Paperboy, right? Paperboy's mom. We kind of like compared to uh, the death of his mom, him dealing with it, and then when he's in Amsterdam, he sees this woman who we defined who could possibly be the, the spirit of hip hop, right? Okay. And he's talking to her, and this, that, and the third. Well, with this, there's a relationship between Thomas and with his wife and his son, and I feel like his son is probably a metaphor for us in general. Like he's doing this for us, mm. and we, and he doesn't want to let his son down. He doesn't want to let us down. Mm. Is there anything that you might have might have seen? Uh, regarding his relationships with other people around him towards the real life, real world? Um, so you're saying that the son is like the embodiment of the of culture? Us. Yeah, maybe us. Um, like he doesn't want to let us down. Okay, yeah, and maybe the wife is kind of similar. You know, he's as to maybe like, um, because you know, he's the wife said, you know, he cheated on her and he, you know, did all these things and he was mean. Yeah, so maybe those are some of the things that were said, you know what I mean, to mm -hmm. um. To Glover or whomever he's portraying mm -hmm. um, as part of uh, what they felt about his path right? Mm -hmm. right so I think you know he's like oh you you know she's like oh you cheated on me he was mean and all this stuff and yeah. at the beginning it was all golden and he would draw pictures even if we couldn't afford it you know yeah. here was the picture of this thing mm -hmm. and so he made sure that you know everything we had even if we couldn't have it physically we had it you know mentally or in spirit or whatever right so I felt like that part as far as that if you're relating you know his family right. to this part to this part of what he's talking about yeah, yeah I thought that was cool mm -hmm. um, the beginning of season four it started with the lake Mm -hmm. and the haunting of a lake with the, the evil spirits or dead spirits or whatever it is, the spirits of black people or injustice haunting this lake and killing people as a result of Lake Lanier, right? Okay. I think that was the beginning of season four, the first part of season four. Well, anyways. I thought, I thought that was three. Okay, Well, anyway. one may have been three. It okay. may have been three. Uh -huh. Well, anyways, uh, we're back to a lake again where somebody has disappeared. Oh, in the lake. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I thought that was interesting. That is time. fascinating. All right, yo, I swear I'm done. Thank you so much <laughs> for hanging out. I could probably talk about this. All, he could talk all day long. All day, all day. <laughs> yo, what do we get right? What do we miss? Where do we need to be corrected? What are your thoughts? Just in general, another brilliant piece yeah. uh, by Donald Glover. I'm brilliant. With the beautiful Michael Clare. Thank you, Santel. Oh, thank you, Santel. <laughs> Can we talk? Yeah, shout out to Tevin Campbell. <laughs> <laughs> Brian the Nice Sinbad, yo, all hitters of the '90s. Okay, uh, yo, you can reach uh, you can reach Michael Claire. Uh, link in the description for uh, Sweetie Vegans. And yo, I think that is it. Make sure you give us those thumbs up. Hit the subscription button if you just enjoy this type of conversation. Because we, as you can see, we chop this bad boy up. All right, yo, we are out of here. Peace. <laughs>